I had always heard the term, the winter of the soul, and certainly I had experienced dark days, but this particular season stood alone, it seemed. Because I belonged to God, I had many times over felt His pruning on my heart, but this particular time stood out. As I look back, I can see all those times that He knew when and what needed to be cut away from my heart, even when I didn't. But there are other seasons like this one that it's as if He let me see it for myself, what needed to be cut away. And He gave me the gift of learning to trust His hand, testing the strength and the resilience of this little branch of His like never before. My birthday is in late autumn, and that year I received a very meaningful gift from my sister-in-law, Kristen, a very trusted soul. It was a potted amaryllis bulb with this letter attached. She wrote, We have this common thread in our family. We're drawn to the rich symbolism we find in the beauty of God-created things like trees, vines, and blooms. The way a tree takes root, the way a branch is nourished from the vine, the way beautiful things need necessary tending to bring forth more beauty. We love the marking of seasons and how we can trust that God is working in ways we cannot see. We know that every season is named with purpose. A season of sowing brings forth a season of harvest, just as the harsh cold of winter brings a season of dying, a necessary bridge to new life. The winter is beautiful under its blanket of white, but it is cold and harsh to the living thing determined to grow. Everyone knows that the season for blooming is in the warmth of spring. Its gentle breezes and warm sun send a message to a sleeping world that all things are becoming new. It would take great courage to bloom in the bitterness of winter, but there are the rare and beautiful treasures that choose to grow when the conditions are the darkest. In the bleakness of winter, the amaryllis will spring up, pushing through the soil, displaying the beauty it was created to share. Sure, it would be easier to wait until the comfort of spring, but the amaryllis bulb knows it cannot wait. It does not bloom because the conditions are perfect. In fact, the conditions are counterintuitive to new life. But the amaryllis blooms in winter, even still. It will not look to the world around it and depend on it for nurturing or care. It will instead obey the world within it and become exactly what it was created to be, to bear the image of the beauty inside itself, set there by a creator, not bound by time or season. The letter went on to tell me that my family would be praying amaryllis prayers for me in that season, that I too would have the courage to bloom in winter. I waited with such anticipation for something, anything, to break through the soil of that ceramic pot. Finally, one day, a tiny green shoot pushed through. As I watched it grow taller and taller and gloriously bloom that Christmas, I found myself remembering Jesus more than ever. He certainly didn't arrive when conditions were perfect. In fact, he arrived in the midst of a silence and a winter that the world had never known. And just when we thought we'd never see spring, heaven gave a king. He surprised the night when we least expected it. His love broke through and he shined, pushing through the hardness of winter on our behalf. He has and always will be new life. And that very life He offers to us, that no matter how dark and bleak our condition may be, like Him, we too can bloom with the brilliance of summer, right in the middle of winter. Whoa!
growing up a family that you would call your own And through a fragile people the light of life would come When it seemed like we never see spring Heaven gave a king Like an ever-running Like a Christmas and 